America is the greatest country in the world. Think of all the great things that have come from America. Rugby. Chicken tikka masala. Chinese people. Ass. Harry Potter. Rubber balls and liquor. Then I say something. I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man. I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man. Electricity should draw my finger. Nail. I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man. It is 3.26 p.m. on Thursday, November 17th, 2016. I'm shooting this intro in the afternoon to make lighting easier, but later on tonight I will be heading to the AMC Burbank 16 in beautiful Burbank, California to meet up with a bunch of friends and catch a 10 p.m. IMAX 3D screening of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm Some Jerk with a Camera, and welcome to One Movie Later, where I compare and contrast my preconceptions and postconceptions of movies in theaters now. So, <laughs> how's your month been going? <laughs> if you follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and that sort of thing, you've already heard me discuss this uh, ad nauseum, and Lukeski and I already released a pretty stupid video where we touch on it a little, and that's available somewhere on the screen here. I'm probably going to release a uh, another vlog where I touch upon it more directly, and how it relates to my particular field of interest. But for now, let's just say that I do not have the most positive opinion about America in general at the moment. And I'm guessing neither does J.K. Rowling, given her general opinion on politics. One could almost say she uh, predicted this. <laughs> so it's a very weird time for, um, as far as I'm aware, the first ever J.K. Rowling piece of fiction set in America. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is something of an odd beast in and of itself. It is another extended universe movie. It's kind of another attempt by Warner Brothers to establish another cinematic universe because Lord knows they're great at that. But it's being done uh, not only with J.K. Rowling's permission, but with her full involvement. She wrote the screenplay. And this is the first ever full screenplay that she's written. She didn't just write the book and then hand screenplay duties off to Steve Clovis or someone. No, no, this is, this is all her. It's being directed by David Yates, who of course directed uh, the last four Harry Potter movies. And the basic premise is that within the Harry Potter universe, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is one of the required reading books that Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to read at Hogwarts, but this is a movie about the guy who wrote that book. And that book, within the context of the Harry Potter universe, wasn't even that big a plot device or anything, you know? It wasn't one of Voldemort's horcruxes or anything. I mean, it was mentioned in the Harry Potter books a few times, of course, but I don't think it was even mentioned in the movies. Now, from what I've heard, none of the major characters in this movie were in the Harry Potter uh, books or movies. I hear Dumbledore maybe might make a cameo, but aside from that, no, no characters in common, which in itself is kind of a risk on Warner Brothers' part. And I understand that, you know, Warner Brothers is a company, and of course they were going to make more movies in the Harry Potter universe because, I mean, <laughs> they already milked The Hobbit for all it was worth and way more. But it seems weird that they would choose this topic in particular because it's just so esoteric compared to the rest of the world. I mean, they've even had to really hard sell in the commercials from J.K. Rowling and from the universe of Harry Potter comes this other, you know, story of the thing. And also, uh, perhaps to make the film a bit more commercial, they are setting it in America. Which is interesting in the sense of, hey, I always wanted to know what the Wizarding World was like in America. Don't get me wrong, I'm very, very glad that the films in particular stuck to being set in Britain, but, you know, I am interested to explore the rest of the world. In America, they don't call non-magic people muggles, they call them nomadges. Nomadge, that's pretty stupid. Well, it's kind of supposed to be stupid because Americans are stupid, you see? Whenever there's a word that means something different in England than it does in America, the English version always makes more sense or is more interesting or just rolls off the tongue better. Have you noticed that? Like in America, we call it soccer, where in England they call it football, which is such a great word for a sport, football, that we gave that word to a completely different sport that is not primarily played with feet. Elevator, lift, oh, what does this thing do? Well, it lifts you up, well, let's call it a lift. Well, Americans are like, oh, let's call it elevate, so let's add three more syllables to it and make it way more complicated than it needs to be. It's like, of course Americans would call muggles no matches. This is the first of what they've said will be five Fantastic Beasts films, 
films. I wonder if the next one is gonna be Fantastic Beasts and when to find them, and then Fantastic Beasts and why to find them, and how to find them, and who to find them with, and what to wear, and blabbity bloobity. I'm not in the funniest mood, as you can probably tell. This is a movie where I've kind of tried to avoid the pre-release buzz and avoided reading about it or, you know, watching clips online or anything because I really do want to be surprised by this movie. I saw the first two Harry Potter movies, uh, the Columbus movies, in theaters before I'd read any of the books, and I really liked them. Uh, and Chamber of Secrets, in retrospect, really doesn't hold up, but I really liked it at the time. But then I read Prisoner of Azkaban uh, shortly after the second movie came out, came out and I was just hooked and I read Goblet of Fire immediately after. Then later that summer when Order of the Phoenix came out, I bought it the day it came out. Um, when Half-Blood Prince came out, I went to like a midnight party and same with Deathly Hallows. So I haven't seen a Harry Potter movie without knowing what was going to happen in it since 2002. And I'm kind of anxious to do that again. So I'm hoping this movie will be fun. I'm hoping it'll be a nice distraction from the horrid events of the world. I'm hoping I'll get some valuable advice about exactly where I can find Fantastic Beasts, and I'm hoping I don't immediately projectile vomit when I see John Voight's face. Proud American nomad with a gun instead of a wand. All right, we are back. I have a big old group here. Uh, let's Hello. go around and all. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Erica Hayes. I was J.K. Rowling. I wrote one of the best-selling book series of all time. I'm Draco Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. But, but you're under the muggle guy, uh, uh, the no magic guys of... Of ill -managed, a guy who talks about movies sometimes. Mostly Pokemon. And Mostly stuff, Pokemon. Uh, I am Maguire, A.K.A. Morgan, A.K.A. barely appearing on the internet these days, but I am around. I'm Dave, a.k.a. Doggins, a.k.a. the guy who says, you want to go get a butterbeer? You want to get a butterbeer? I'm Zach Hurst, also known as the wizard that looks like Chris Pratt, but somehow isn't. I am Haley Callahan, otherwise known as Trickster Bell, otherwise known as several extras in all these guys' videos. I'm Charlie. I do things. Indeed you do. Prove it. And this is the guy's apartment we have barged into. Hi, I'm Luke Ski. I haven't read the books. <laughs> Suck it, haters. <laughs> None of us are probably going to be able to get a word in edgewise, but damn it, we will try. We just saw Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and we found it generally, I found it very excellent. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a lot. It we was, found it to be them. It, oh, it set out to do a very specific thing, sort of like uh, The Force Awakens had to do, but more right. so where it had to get us reinvested in the world. I would, it, it, I, with I, a new cast with and none of the originals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it was fighting an even more uphill battle than right, Force Awakens new, was. Right, because it's a I, new time period and a new setting. I, I would compare it more, actually, to uh, what I imagine Rogue One is going to have to do. Yeah, with, with yeah, Rogue, yeah. It's basically, yeah. hey, do, you know the normal episodes you all know? Well, let's try telling different stories that are <laughs> yeah, related. Yeah. At its weakest moments, it kind of felt like official fanfic. Not in the sense that it wasn't good, because it was good, but in the sense that it was, I, I guess by design, it was delving into these, you know, little scene nooks and crannies of the world that right, you never would have expected them to build a whole movie around. Right, but, but that, that's another comparison to Rogue One. Something that's really interesting about this new form of storytelling is, and it's been going really well for Marvel's Avengers films and, and films for a long time, is, is um, premeditated storytelling, it's building a story based on something that already has an established lore so you can make quick fire jokes that, um, or references that you don't have to explain to the audience and don't have to um, spend a whole lot of time they're working so into. Because yeah. they embedded in the pop culture. That, right. you know, people just get it right away. Teeny sister was trying to get into a locked office. And she was saying, uh, alone Mora, and just throwing out all of these, uh, like, unlocking spells. And she was like, oh, this is a really, this is a really hard one, which... This is they, a tough pickle. Yeah, <laughs> they, I mean... Boy, howdy! One of the nice things about this versus the Harry Potter movies is we've been through eight of those movies now. We right. don't need to, like, set up lore, like, what did this spell do and that spell do? There were really very few references to the Harry Potter lore that we were already familiar with. Right. Like, Dumbledore gets mentioned once. Yeah. Hogwarts and like twice. Hog Hogwarts a couple of times, and, um, and, and we'll get to this in spoilers, but a character who was mentioned in the Harry Potter books, but never in the movies, as far as I'm aware, um, uh, shows up at one point in this. But Elf. We'll 
Yes, Alf shows up. <laughs> <laughs> How old is right. Dumbledore supposed to be? He's like a hundred. Like, like, yeah, he's, 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 he's pretty. He's pretty old. Like yeah, like by, yeah, by the like, by the seventh or sixth book. He's he's certainly in Professor Farnsworth. I'm going to ask the magical source known as the Internet. The right hand. Yes. Well, they have Flamel's live forever, too. Her wizards just have a long life expectancy. But he's got the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, no! I called it the wrong title! Damn, you're not British. You're not British. A lot of the things I was worried about didn't come to pass. Uh, I was worried that Eddie Redmayne would be annoying, and he really wasn't. No, well, he also wasn't nearly... It was much more of an ensemble movie. It, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, the, the most annoying thing he did, he, he did have a tendency to kind of overdo the Andy Samberg jizz in my pants face, the sort of <laughs> this thing that, you know, he, whenever he, he was did, nervous. But, but I, at the same time, I thought that kind of worked for his character just because he was supposed to be really awkward and awkward. I also I feel like they, they, they didn't force him into kind of a hero Role. Like they didn't force him into kind of the oh the the clever butthole that everyone somehow <laughs> likes. No, he he was a very specific personality, and it wasn't one that liked the spotlight. They tried to do the Star Lord kind of hero with a lot of these sort of yeah, uh, genre yeah, adventure yeah. movies, and they didn't do that. Eddie Redmayne is chal is like channeling Matt Smith the entire time. Yeah, he's yeah. like doing a little like every he's, time he's talking, he's just like yeah. squatty and like he's on very he very like, pursed lips. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, and the was, way he, that he he's always staring at people like, through his yeah, hair yeah. and doesn't make yeah. eye contact with anyone until really late in the movie when he starts actually looking at people. He was, he was very to like looked socially anxious. The only time he was anxious was when he was was when he was with his with his creatures. It yeah, was an almost like a faulty towers kind of farce thing <laughs> yeah. where like, he's just trying to do like what he wants to do and then just the and plot keeps <laughs> dragging him back. But, yeah. he, keeps get, he keeps getting waylaid by Jack Assery, as Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Venture would say. But, but also, Tony, you haven't seen Jupiter Ascending, so you haven't seen Truly Awful Ed That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> this was the first Harry Potter story to have such a prominent muggle character. Yeah, it yes. focused a lot, not only that, but it actually focused a lot more on exactly what the relationship between the muggle and wizard mm -hmm. world is. Mm -hmm. And a sympathetic yeah. muggle character. A sympathetic yeah. actually, all we got was the Dursleys. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're not sympathetic. And, and he was so... Like, he was so perfectly cast just based on his facial reactions. To and, and, and speaking of Star Wars, he was played by the fat guy from Fanboys. Nobody calls Han Solo a bitch. Once he starts to accept what he's seeing around him, he's totally on board for all of it. <laughs> right, right, yes. right. He, he's like, okay, he's I'm, I'm all in. Let's... He's the original fanboy. <laughs> exactly. It's the oh 20s, God. we haven't invented science yet, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I really, really love Teeny. Thought. She was like really a really empathetic. I liked character. both of the girls. Yeah, yeah. both of the yeah. girls were, were great. Absolutely. I thought yeah. they were both really well rounded. I thought that yeah, I'm like, oh, you're not Hermione, and oh, you're not Luna Lovegood, but they had their own kind of. No, they were yeah. they, they were fully fleshed out female they were, they were. So impressive. They I, I, saw, I saw them as you're not Emily Mortimer and you're not Kristen Chenoweth, but you're yeah. you're, you're almost. <laughs> I was kept looking at these character uh, at these actors like, do I know him? Do I know her? And basically, with the exception of Colin Farrell, Eddie Redmayne, and one other person we'll talk about in spoilers. Yep. And John Everyone Boyd. Everyone else. And John Boyd. <coughs> and John Boyd. Uh, the, if those are your main stars, that's not a lot of star power. For well, it doesn't mean star power. It's well, no, because the star, the star it's power. Got magic. It's got wonder. It's well, got it's technology, it, right? It's got, it's got wonder. Right. Oh, it has well, the star no, power. Look at it. What wondering it all over this joint. <laughs> it, it has the star power of the screenwriter. It, Indeed, what it yes. has is J.K. How many films can you honestly it? say that about? So, like, yeah. like this and Quentin Tarantino <laughs> movies. Yeah. And just say it's got the star power of, of the, the social the, network. Yeah. That's, actually, yeah. Yeah. that's the star power of Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Facebook. yeah. yeah. And, 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 and movies Aaron Sorkin cranks yeah. out. Good it's God, free. that woman can write. It still felt like a Harry Potter movie, but it felt distinctly like its own entity. Well, you would know. You wrote it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Bye -bye. There was that. that one scene where you walk into the American version of uh, the Ministry of Magic. Yeah, the, the, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the Wizard Congress. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, you walk in there and you look around and you're like, oh 
oh my god, it's Harry Potter, and it just kind of hits you in that moment. Also the scene where we are introduced to uh, Newt Scamander's menagerie for the first time. Yes. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. there aren't many cuts in that shot, there's a lot of camera movement, so you're just yeah, following yeah. Uh, Dan Folkler's reaction, all the critters, and just like the full scope of wonder. And they're so cute! This is the to best me. Pokemon movie I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, the plot is, gotta catch them all! It's, Hi, oh. it's, 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 called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Lose Them. Where to Retrieve Them. Yeah. Really yeah. Alternate title, Eddie Redmayne Destroys Everybody's <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> the Jupiter Ascending Story. Eponymous Fantastic Beasts are all almost Hensonian in their creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They, they, yeah. they were, they were terrific. <laughs> and, and also very Harry Potter-esque, a very terrific blend of cute and grotesque. Yes, yes. And they were all new. None of these were like, none of these had more creatures that have been seen in the other movies. Well, I, I think I think a lot of them were in the the, the original the, the book. Oh, oh fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. they're meant they're like Oh, that I okay. think the but, Niffler. Uh, yeah, there was a Niffler in the book of book 5, but not the movie. Okay. Um, right, right. And right, I right. don't think anything else was in the Harry Potter. Books. I meant the movies. I haven't read the books in a while. I will say some of the things that are some of the creatures I, I wasn't a huge fan of, like particularly the rhinoceros thing. I, I when you I mean my new best friend <laughs> the rhino, the rhino, the, the one rhino one hippo a, pig. Thing. Yeah, that one. And there's another one that's like, so like a, it's like member of tentacle mouths. When I say I don't like them, I don't mean they're bad designs. I mean they look more like they belong in Avatar than in Harry Potter or Lovecraft. Yeah. yeah, I was just disappointed that the platypus thing never fought an evil scientist. Can we talk about the Ink and Paint Club? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the Ink and Paint Mosai Sleeve. Freaking <laughs> Oh yeah, that was great. What was it called? Like the pig's head or something? Or? I don't remember. But I, all I know is that it, all I know is that it was Ron Perlman as a it was as like a motion capture yeah. goblin. One never changed. That's who I, was, that's, I was trying to figure out who that was <laughs> the entire scene. Yeah, really yeah. awkward, like curled back finger. All his fingers were like that. All his fingers were like curled back, broken fingers. Yeah, that was yeah. Like, and I, I couldn't decide if that was like a one thing or like. And like, and but, but it makes but sense. A long, it's a visual storytelling tool. Is if he's like like a mobster type character, they yeah. would have broken. And, it. And, 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 and a long hook nose Nazi propaganda nose. There was something doubly appropriate about you know the wizarding community in hiding and a prohibition era speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combining yeah. to a single place. Putting it in the 1920s kind of helps keep it with that more mystical, old timey feeling that, you know, because, you know, the Harry Potter movies took place, took place in modern times, but all the important stuff happens in castles, and where it's yeah, all still yeah. fairly yeah, medieval. Yeah. Like, the best you get is a flying People car. Ride with quills. You know? How do you get the muggle born? Wizards to give up their smartphones for parchment and ink. Like, yeah. how are you yeah. going to get them to? You you set the original series in the nineties. Is what yeah, you yeah, yeah. That's what that was her. Exactly. She never addressed those kinds of things. But if she was going to be doing a present time, present day story now, they would be kind of difficult to avoid. Whereas placing it in the twenties, she avoids all that problem. They're going to teach you the Agio spell, children. It will bring you anything you want no, to you. I have... got Grubhub. Uh, yeah, exactly. Grubhub <laughs> on Amazon. We're done. It's the Marauders app. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of visual storytelling, um, like throughout the whole movie, there was <laughs> Thank you, Bert. Um, there was really, really amazing, just small details. Which J.K. Rowling is always really amazing yes. at is which like, you are always. <laughs> I've, I've, I mean, gilded, I I've gilded the lily at this point. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's but, mostly that. Speaking of dead lilies. But, uh, Some people. Hey, uh, hey, Tony, how long can I keep hitting this dead yeah, horse back here? When he's reading the book in the bed, and it's like, it's one of um, Teeny's books, and you just see a little cat run across up the book. Um, and he looks so day. happy to be reading it. Yeah, it's, yeah. So I'm a, a little pulled at the missed opportunity here. that he could have been reading Babbity Rabbity. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> but just isn't it, saying. Isn't it just kind of a children's book? Yeah. I, okay, yeah. you know what? The the story of Babbity Rabbity is an essential. Okay, this is like deep lore. You gotta, like, Why would a grown <laughs> woman with no kids have Bab have a children's book? Do you not have five copies of Babbity Rabbity? Okay, you got me. This movie was a lot darker uh, than... Yeah, I think yeah, we might finally yes. have a creature that could rival the Dementors for how scary it is. Yeah. And yeah. It's, I gotta say, it did. I was a lot of very worried about kind of whitewashing 
in a sense, like the 1920s in America, because it did yeah. kind of suck. It, it, yeah. There's a lot of suckage, and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't sugarcoat it. And J.K. Rowling doesn't sugarcoat it. Oh, she you mean whitewashing as in like, as in like making, making it lesser? It, okay, yes. okay, right. Or like, romanticizing it. Okay, I got you. Okay, I was like, what? <laughs> all, all the humans were whitewashed, but the humans. <laughs> Everybody was actually blue. These actors were all actually yeah. blue. Then they put white makeup on them. There was a very nice balance between the sort of screwball comedy-ness of, uh, of Eddie Redmayne and Dan Fogler and their subplot, and this much darker element that's yes, going on at the right. same time that eventually collide with each other, right. and I'm which sure is, will. Which is very kind of Harry Potter, in a way. Part of, I think, why it's, this one seems so much darker is that, because obviously stuff got really dark in the I mean, all the David Yates Harry Potter movies, because that's right. what he did. But there was still like three movies of just fun adventure warm up for that. This was just like, nope, here we are. Let's go straight on into the of fascism in the United States in the twenties. Yeah. Let's well, just like, do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think literally the first shot of the movie was just four people dying yeah. over the Hedwig theme. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's try it. Die, 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 die. 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 I do want to talk about the soundtrack a bit because because a lot of it was like the typical Harry Potter score, but then specifically the theme for Dan Fogler's character, what was the, kinda, was the, well, the jazzy twenty, well, yeah. you, you know, it's it B sides from the Jeans and Booster soundtrack. <laughs> for as expansive as the Harry Potter books were, they were always kind of limited by the fact that they had to revolve around Harry and Ron and Hermione, and they, except for the seventh one, they had to be set at Hogwarts. There's all these teachers, and then there's all the students, and the, te the students, you can't use magic unless we tell you to, and blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know, it's just kind of this whole, you know, waiting for the kids to finally do magic. So when do we get to the fireworks factory? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, here it's like, no, we're all adults, we use magic every moment of the day. Oh, look at the plates, oh, here, have a spoon, oh, <laughs> to a complaint about this movie is that compared to the Harry Potter uh, stories, I, I didn't really get that feeling of kind of subtle profundity you got from most of them, largely because there was really no Dumbledore analog in this movie who, who was there to dispense the subtle profundity, you know? Well, there is an element, like, a lot of the profundity well, of, also... of the original uh, seven books comes from the fact that they are stories about growing up. That is and, true. And yeah. this is Told a story about adults. Who nevertheless were kind of stalled in their lives. Yeah, who yeah. Had, uh, who were actually... <laughs> kind of feeling that lack of guidance. Who identifies with that? I knew going into it, like, J.K. Rowling said in an interview they want to do five of these films, and, uh, and, and, and you know, so I, so I thought, all right, well, this may or may not have an actual ending because they want to set up more movies, but this actually really did work yeah. as a standalone movie. It had a sequel no it, and still had a satisfying resolution to yeah. it. Yeah, really which is yeah. how yeah, you're yeah. supposed to do a finale. Exactly. Like, well, there's it, no post credit scene. There's no right credit scene. No. It's just well, the end of the movie was, is the end of the movie. Yeah, credits. The great thing about Fantastic Beasts is it condensed it to one city at one very specific place and time, which and not even a very, she was just allowed yeah. to go wild in that one right. parameter, and yeah. it, and that really worked. I think I enjoyed this movie more than uh, any of the other eight, just because there wasn't a book to compare it to. Yeah, yes. because, because I went in with fresh expectations, yeah. Yeah. not like I, no expectations of well, how is this scene going to translate? It, yeah, was, this movie was one hundred percent J.K. Rowling. I yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. She didn't direct it, but the director has worked with her for over a decade. Oh, yeah. And, and Warner she, Brothers knows not to cross and, her. And it's like you said in the review, Tony, arguably her greatest strength is world building, and right. this was... Yeah, this was and another great this world on Bill. And you, well, this is something thing she was great at, even in the books, is those chapters that was always like the first or second chapter that would recap what had happened in the series right, that right. so far. She was the master at doing those in a way that was compelling, where you were excited to be reading it, even if it you had read those books. Every you know, time. yeah, Kevin Murphy, in his, in his book A Year at the Movies, pointed out, he did a chapter about the release of the first Harry Potter movie, and he pointed out, J.K. <coughs> Rowling, even in, in her earliest novels, wrote like a screenwriter. Yeah. You know, you, you look at a page and you just, and there's description and, and character and everything, and you see it in your mind, the yeah. way you, the way, so, so it's really kind of a natural fit. Shall we get into spoiler territory? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know the women all call me, they call me the Wizard of Love. The love, the wizard of love. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny, Johnny Depp. Fucking Depp. <laughs> 
yeah. is Grindelwald. I didn't even read, read Johnny Depp's reveal a sequel bit. I read that as, okay, we need to reveal this character we haven't even shown in the movie yet, right. but it can't be just some dude, so let's get a really yeah. famous well, actor. Yeah, yeah. 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 It reminded me of uh, David Tennant as Barty Crouch. Although, wasn't that pre Tennant as, as Doctor Who? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wait, the well, doctor. it was either. Right. They did not use their Johnny Depp weapon. <laughs> he was just there for yes. a second. Because I, I, he was. Okay, so the Colin Farrell character actually is Grindelwald in disguise. Right. Whoa, probably. whoa, whoa. And whoa. Then, probably using Polyjuice Potion. Potion. Yeah. yeah. And then after he's revealed. Like, it slow moves in on, on Johnny Depp's face, and he does this Johnny Depp thing that I can't stand, that he only has ever done with Tim Burton before, where he, like, does duck face and wild eyes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he he just kind of whispers, says his words, and I'm like, that is not a well-directed Johnny Depp right there. He does that the is, whole blue steel is, thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that is someone saying, here, Johnny, just do what you want, instead of saying, no, Johnny, this is what yep. we want from you. By the way, not the first time Johnny Depp and Colin Farrell have yeah. played the same character. <laughs> yeah. That's the imaginary of <laughs> Dr. Barnes. Let's talk about the, the freaking fundamentalists in yeah. this movie. Oh my god. They call themselves like the second Salem or something. And they're and they're Which is a New wonderful Salem. New Salem. Don't yeah. whistle thing. Which I interpreted as a huge fuck you from J.K. Rowling to everyone who was burning her books yes. when they first became <laughs> yes. like, like all those religious fundamental Harry Potter will teach your kids witchcraft, you know. Like, now we're gonna make him a Christ allegory. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, that kind of fundamentalist movement is actually period accurate because the twenties is when prohibition passed, yeah. and there's like so many of these kind of pocket splinter um, things. Like, so, I, I guess cults, but they were more like social movement cults because they weren't explicitly religious. Well, um, it was also a big. It was time when like seances and Ouija boards and table tipping were all very right, common. And then right, a lot, right. a lot of the old bitter missionary women were fighting against that. The dinner for the senator, who was the son of the newspaper man, he, he talked saying, about. You know, we we came for those odious saloons and the pool halls and the, the speakeasies and next. Well, and, was anyone else getting a citizen cane vibe? Very yes. much so. Intentional. That little girl, like, um, modesty. Right. They sold her so hard. Like, every time they were talking about, there is a magical child near you. Yeah, and it's it on her to face. Yeah. The fake out. The red yeah. hair. Well, yeah. modesty shows up and it's like, oh, that's clearly the monster. Who kept singing this nursery rhyme about burning witches. And yeah. yeah. We, I, I was getting a huge, you know, one, two, Freddy's coming from for you vibe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that they, was intentional, but it was a yeah. little too obvious for JK. When you consider Harry's upbringing, there's really no reason he should be tolerant towards muggleborns and 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 and, and, and muggles in general because he he's only known horrible muggles. Yeah, you know, or there's no be reason towards anybody. I mean, look at what happens to abused children. Exactly, get locked in closets. There's no reason he wouldn't become a Slytherin and side side with Malfoy when you really think about it. And I guess the fact that. You know, he's a good person anyway, just speaks to his character. But here we got the flip side of that, where you got a mm. wizard raised by nomadges in this case, who you know, was abused and did turn against them. Credence is to Harry yes. Potter kind of what Kylo Ren is to Luke Skywalker. Yes! Yes! yes. yes. That's Very exactly. good analogy. That's what it looks like. Credence wasn't the subtlest of metaphors for uh, repressed children of fundamentalist overbearing <laughs> yeah. parents. Right? <laughs> Or, or the, wasn't the subtlest metaphor for Mike Pence victims, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, topical! Really, really loved the concept of the as Obscurums. Yeah! yeah. Obscurial, obscure. yeah. and then I think they make obscure. it Obscurial. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I didn't well, quite understand what that works. So is that wizards with it's like It's, it's a magical powers. person um, represses their powers, refuses to use it, refuses to acknowledge it, and that repression is just like pressure building and all that un until they basically until it just uh, it turns until into like until a terrible it, blob of the, destruction. Yeah, they can just turn into an evil cloud monster. Yeah. 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 It's, they turn into ghost and it eventually yeah. kills its host. It's made yeah, of unobtainium. <laughs> and yeah, it's, such, it's such an interesting concept because it's basically uh, <laughs> it's about so we take his chair, Accio. It's a comfy chair. Well, as a, as it's about your kind of the infinite of repression. Of, 
oppression and self loathing yeah, yeah. okay, okay. and yeah. how it will corrupt and destroy and tear its own. Yeah, I, and I, I think it rivals the yeah. Dementors I for so. actual yeah. 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 that is yeah. also yeah. a symbolic monster. Well, it also it sound like creates like, yeah. oh, oh, this is why they need wizard schools. This is why it's right, so important right. to get the magical children and train them to use their powers yeah, and, tell them, and tell them it's okay. Yeah. This is like, not only that, but kind of remove them from the world and get them mm -hmm. to a place where their powers are okay because if Cause this, not not every not every muggle parent is as hateful as the muggle parent in this yeah, one. Like they don't always this parents. is, right, this yeah. is what could have happened this to what's Harry at, right. yeah. if he'd never gotten Well wait, not just well, Harry. This oh, is no. well, I, no, This I'm, is what's I'm, at stake for every yeah. like, potentially every child who's born with magic could become this if it goes badly, and that's why the adults with magic have to it, I mean, it also yeah. explains why they pushed so hard to get Harry into school. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to send you a billion letters through your chimney. But that does. Your washing wow. machine. We're going to have Hagrid yeah. come to our yeah, remote you can't island not and bang send the door your down. Magical kid to school. Why didn't they send millions of letters to Credence? Why um, didn't they send? I don't, well, I, 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 I might not have the same sort of system. I, I guess not. Or maybe they knew Harry was a special case because he was the boy who lived. I don't. Yeah. Also, I'm gonna, the, I'm the whole factor of the twenties sucked. Hogwarts is set up that if your child is magical, that child is going to Hogwarts one right. way or another. They're well, not, it, it, in, it, in the movies, right, 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 it, right, right. It, it, and, but that's Hogwarts. That's in England. This is America. We don't. Uh, or at least this is America in the 20s. Yeah. We don't know what sort of system Ivermoni has. Grindelwald, this Carl and Feral, told Credence, you're a squib. I right, smelled right. it yeah. on you. You have magical parents, but you have no magic yourself. Because maybe maybe Credence, that character, repressed his magic so much, no one else could tell. And so none of the magical sensors of let's send this kid to school went off because he was so repressed. Good thought. That, my, that is, my theory is that uh, Creedence didn't get a letter because J. Edgar Hoover spent all of the Alberti money on liquor and whores. <laughs> <laughs> Who's well, the president? Well, Go back to your room. I'm, One of the things that um, Kowalski and Scamander bonded over was World War One. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, something yeah. that hasn't been mentioned in any of the um, auxiliary stuff from J.K. Rowling, but apparently there was a magic front in World War One, Which apparently involved dragons. dragons. Yeah. yeah, now, dragons. now, now here's, here's what I'm wondering. <laughs> if America and England in World War One had all the wizards and dragons, they would have, the war would have lasted a week tops. So does that mean the Germans had all that stuff too? And if so, does that mean there were literally wizard Nazis? Well, no, this is World War One. Well, no, but, but why would why would all the I'm wizards? No, but they, they were they, they were not even touched. Tony, World Tony, War II Tony, yet. Tony, they were they were absolutely dogs flying dog houses. <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> cannon <laughs> facing the Red Baron. I don't know about. Wizard Nazis, but definitely Nazi werewolves. I think yes. that's still on the table. Yes. Yeah. That's still on the table. I mean, but it, Good. The werewolf women of the SS. Yes. Yes. There are definitely, there's definitely an opening for that because they've established that at least three countries in Europe have their own wizarding schools. Right, yeah. 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 So it, isn't, it would not be entirely out of place for Germany to have and one. And also, Japan was part of World War One. Uh, the Ottoman Empire was part of World War yeah. One. Um, Russia, which... You know Japan's got some badass dragons. Oh my yeah. god. The thing is, their dragons only come together when you get seven balls in a room. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I appreciate that they actually <laughs> let Dan Fogler lose his memory. Yes, yeah, I was yeah. not he expecting chose them. It. That was his choice. That was his yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. He realized, look, this just this just can't happen. Yeah, and it was actually what? really moving. Do we know if Eddie Redmayne is coming back for the sequels? Or, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's he, the thing. Is, I like, think you could easily to... just tell more Grindelwald stuff with a completely yeah. different yeah. cast. Maybe. I mean, like, a, I think a, I a Quidditch through the ages would be really cool, like, with, um... You know, all of we'll do it as like a Rocky 15. sports movie where you know, they're trying to defeat the the rich snobs and the would, fat kids. I mean, can't I would like the Quidditch World Cup growing up, so I would love more about that. We'll get the sixties one where we see how the Wizards approached free love and yeah. you know, <laughs> Can we spend a, a, a little bit of a moment to talk about um, the the magical death sentence? Oh, yes, that yeah, scene was yeah. so interesting. That was, oh my goodness. I thought it was like a giant pensive. I think that was a more medieval way of execution back in the old ministry Back in days. the medieval days? <laughs> back in the medieval days, yes. 
Um, which they had since done away with when they discovered, oh yeah, we could just remove... We have Dementors the, now. We have Dementors, we can remove right. the this memories of you being a wizard or a witch oh, or whatever. Right. Well, we can make you harmless. Exactly. We can yeah. make you a vegetable. We don't have to kill you. But that execution room, I love that it looked like um, an asylum and like yeah. they had the orderlies kind of yeah. bring them in. It won't hurt. It won't hurt me. Yeah. Look, don't you want to go oh. for a swim? But what scared me was that the quote unquote water like burned everything up, which I thought was almost a, like a subtle detail of burning, of witch burning. Um, uh, yeah. 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 So I thought that was kind of interesting. They were like looking at all the nomads and they're like, you know what? They got something there. <laughs> if she <laughs> weighs the same as a duck, yeah. <laughs> she's made of wood. And then <laughs> she turned me into newt. <laughs> Yeah. Let's assume the movie does well. Let's assume these next four movies have to do with the characters in this movie. It's time to play everybody's favorite game show. Who will J.K. Rowling murder? Who will J.K. Rowling murder? Nuke Scamander. When does he die, or or does he not die? He dies sacrificing himself for one of his animals. I think I remember reading, like, on one of those chocolate frog cards in, like, one of the games at some point that, like, that was actually how he died. If he dies, it will be at the end of the last movie. All yes. right. So, yeah. okay. Don't quote me on that, though. It's been a very like long self-sacrifice. time. Self-sacrifice. Sacrifice for creature. Okay. Uh, Propentia Goldstein. One of those Goldsteins has to survive because you know why? Okay, there is so a character in the Harry Potter books called Anthony Goldstein. Oh, and yeah. he goes to Hogwarts. Ooh. So someone has to be his grandma. Alright, so, so there's... So, so the girl wouldn't pass on the name, though. Oh, that's right. That but if know. she was a single mother... That's true. If, so if okay, someone so had a clandestine hookup with a nomad, <coughs> is all so, I'm so saying. Oh. Oh. Especially since they established that legally in America, at, at least in the 20s, yeah, you can't you marry. Can. Wizards and nomads just can cannot, marry. Just cannot right. marry. So do we think Propentia survives or dies? I think she lives, and then we see an epilogue with her. She's older, and she's got Pikachu. Sorry, that's the original ending of Pikachu Strikes Back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so we're ready to All right, here we go to Luke's room. Jacob Kowalski. I think he lives, but I think he gets maimed in some way. <laughs> okay, I yeah. Mean, yeah. So Loses like, the mustache. I think he would die. That's that's my bet on who's gonna die. I think if she kills any character. Well, mm. more people are here saying he lives, so I'm gonna. Yes. Well, no, he's saying it louder. He lives unless he doesn't. Okay, good. Does Teeny live or die? I think she absolutely lives. I think yeah. she's gonna yeah, live. Yeah, okay. Yes. Is Seraphina Pickery the woman who was in charge of all the? Yes. She's dead. Which part does she die in? Midpoint. Three. Three. Midpoint yeah, is being okay. killed by Grindelwald's hand. Henry Shaw. You know John Voight's in here. I can't imagine J.K. Rowling wants to work with John Voight again after this. <laughs> Week, so he dies off camera between the first yeah. and second. <laughs> Motion capture Ron Perlman. What well, happens to him? If yeah. we're going by Dobby rules, he doesn't show up at all until the last movie when they kill him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but he redeems himself. Right. Yes. His heart grows three sizes. Swiper the flat of bush. <laughs> oh, you can't kill the animal. He gets a spin off. He gets his own series. All right. So, right. Spin off. And yeah. finally, uh, Commander Spoiler Johnny Depp. Did oh. we already establish that? Right. Yeah. In the well, books. Well, Dumbledore kills him, yeah, because he. No, no, no. Dumbledore, Dumbledore does not kill him. Him. Dumbledore disarms him and they put him in a tower and freaking wherever and he lives his life in prison in solitude until Voldemort comes in book seven and he's like where's the freaking other <laughs> one and he's like ah, ah you're a sucker and then he kills him so he gets killed right. by Voldemort so, in book seven. so he gets killed by cannon okay yes. <laughs> All right. he gets shot from a cannon and thank you very much tune in next time for who will JK Rowling murder <laughs> Of who will J.K. Rowling murder? Stay at Luke's apartment. Yes, Luke's apartment. Have a cat. Scratch up your things. That leads us to the part of my show that I like to call "What's the Attraction." <laughs> what elements from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them will they weave into into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, uh, Hollywood or Florida? Doesn't matter. Erica, what do you think? Um, I think. Uh, there will be some sort of dark ride with uh, with animals through his little suitcase. I think that would be really cool. There would be a super cool ride entrance to have like gifted like. Go 
you mean just squeeze everyone into a briefcase? <laughs> yeah. 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 like You'll have you. to go for a few hops. Garrett. Uh, I'm thinking a full-scale replica, replica of the uh, Magical Congress, and uh, we allow children to go and learn the exciting world of magical le legislation. How does a bill become law? <laughs> no, it doesn't! <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, I'm a wizard, brilliant, yes, I'm a wizard. <laughs> or as a uh, as an eatery, even though it'd be kind of out of place in the middle of hug in a uh, hug to me, it is um, just like you know Kowalski's bakery. Kowalski's bakery. Yeah. 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 Oh, the Im uh, magical immigration office, and then like you see uh, papers, uh, please. That would be really cool. Like if you, and then um, that's where all the American stuff would be. Morgan. I think we are gonna have the best edition of plushies in the gift shop. <laughs> and, I mean, we. I mean, I love Hedwig, but I can only own so many Hedwig dolls. And now there's just no end to the stuffed animals. When are they gonna find? Buy. When are they gonna sell Angry Inch dolls? That's what I'm. Thinking. <laughs> What I want is for them to open the wizard speakeasy, but not in Wizarding World, in the New York section. <laughs> it's not too late to pull the plug on that Jimmy Fallon attraction and just put the uh, just put the speakeasy there. That we can call so it Club cool. Thirty Three and Three Fourths. <laughs> <laughs> You jazz. have single-handedly redeemed yourself. Yeah. Hey, uh, the Wizard you Jazz in that movie uh, continues the trend set by the fourth movie where wizards apparently only write lyrics about magical creatures. But right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Zach's turn. I mean, speaking on a, on a California... I haven't been to the Florida one, so I can't comment on how that would work there, but uh, here, I mean, there's not a lot of room. But if we're doing there's a joke a thing... perfectly bulldozable Shrek right there. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. Oh, Which is conveniently oh, right next to a New York area. <laughs> but no, they need that for when they start doing the Shrek extended universe. Uh, actually, no. no, I have a new serious answer. Add a third show to the rotation with the Frog Choir and the Triwizard Tournament. That's the animal demonstration. Ooh. My pipe dream is to have a like shooter dark ride where you have, where Newt has lost all his animals again, and you have like special magical magical things where you can like apparate them back into the menagerie and it's all animatronic critters and then it ends in like this huge menagerie set where you get to see all of all of the animals kind of like the end of the et ride men in black fantastic beast attack i love it <laughs> yes uh charlie all right serious answer mm -hmm. pokemon go was such a huge hit this year why not have newt scamander's briefcase oh. and have a kind of ar augmented reality adventure through the wizarding Throughout the world, but not so serious answer. Everything stays the same. Wizarding World of Harry Potter stays the same. The only thing that's different, everybody that leaves automatically turns into Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> a few years back, uh, um, uh, Disney World, I know other places have done this too, we're experimenting with these like full size animatronic like dinosaurs walking around mm -hmm. the Animal Kingdom. If yes, they can make yes. versions of those for some of the larger size Fantastic Beasts. Uh, that would be nifty. Well, they have the raptors at Universal, so they can do the, yeah, they can do the music that technology. They can do that, do that. That, that rhino that's in season. Well, I say you're all wrong. That's it's all going to be in terms of merchandise, and the new the new hot piece of merchandise that, that'll be flying off the shelf so fast will be briefcases that you can lock your kids in and tell them that it's a magical world before <laughs> their eyes. And in the darkness, they'll start seeing weird shapes, and they'll be like, whoa, and you can just keep them in a briefcase for the rest of their lives. Until, until they're, they you know, they're refreshing. Until they turn, they turn into obscurums, and then they'll bring the sweet release of death right to your door. That's what my mother did to me until the age of 12. Oh, no. You were a tiny 12-year-old. And until next time, 23 skadoo. I'm a beast. 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 Final Fantasmic Beasts and where to... I've come here them. to bargain! <laughs> <laughs> Wrong movie. Dr. Beast, the word is... I've back. come here to bargain! <laughs> hey, Zach's back. Yeah, we get the joke. Luke, get the... I come here to yeah. beat a joke to death! We get it. <laughs> and see. Alright. Right. What's right. that about Gabbo? Gobble dingle, gobble dingle, gobble dingle, gobble dingle, gobble, gobble, gobble.
Gobbledygook, Gobbledygook. That's nice.